Here we have 9.8 quotient of two functions advanced. So they want me to find f of g, then give its domain in interval notation. Um, and so I have three different examples here. So for the first one, f of g means to take the f function, which is f and x minus 3, and place it over the g function, which is x plus 9 and x minus 3. Now we already noticed that it's a complex fraction, right? It's fractions within a giant fraction. And so the way we simplify those is to multiply by the common denominator. So in this case, because this denominator is x minus 3 and so is this one, the common denominator is in fact x minus 3. And so when I multiply that, it cancels in the numerator and it cancels in the denominator, leaving me with the expression of x over x plus 9. Now these x's cannot be canceled because they are not factors, they are terms. This one is a term. This one can be considered a term or a factor because it's just one, um, one term. However, the denominator is not a factor at all. It is only a term. So, um, So that means this is going to be the final expression because I cannot simplify it any further. Now the domain. From the previous section, we know that the domain of f over g is going to be the domain of f intersect the domain of g and then remove wherever the denominator equals zero. So remove where g equals zero, okay? So let's first find the domain of f. Now the domain is, the f is a fraction, okay? We know that the domain is all real numbers except wherever the denominator equals zero. So x minus three equals zero when x equals three, which means the domain of f is everything from negative infinity to infinity, but you have to remove that three. And so this is what the interval looks like. It's everything from negative infinity to infinity, but you're not including the three. The three breaks up the interval into two pieces, okay? Now, I'm going to do that, but in a graph. So I'm gonna say here is um, three, and you basically have a hole here, and everything to the right and everything to the left is included in the domain. Then I'm going to find the domain of G. And the domain of G is, again, all real numbers, but because it's a fraction, it's all real numbers except the values that make the denominator zero. And it just so happens that they have the same denominator, so I get the same X value. So again, I get the same interval, which is negative infinity to three. And so then what do the two intervals have in common? Well, it's the same interval, so they have everything in common from negative infinity to three, and then from three to positive infinity. Now, I have to remove wherever g equals zero. So where does g equal zero? Where does the g function equal zero? That is the question, okay? And if I wanna solve this equation, I multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator, which would give x plus 9 equal 0 times anything is still 0. And then I would subtract the 9 over and I'd get negative 9. So basically everything except for the value negative 9, which means I'd have another hole over there at negative 9 if I remove that one number from this interval f intersect g. Okay, so then this is going to be my domain of f over g. It's going to be from negative infinity to negative nine, from negative nine to three, the middle chunk, and then this chunk, which is gonna be three to infinity. So this is the domain of f over g. Okay, so now let's go on to another example, because notice that in this example, um, one of them has a denominator and the other one doesn't. So let's see how that's gonna play. So first I'm gonna find f over g, which means take f over g. It is a complex fraction because I have a fraction within a bigger fraction. 
So I'm going to multiply both um, the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator by this um, common denominator. And so here it's going to cancel the x. And I'm going to get x plus 2 times x over 3. Or in other words, x squared plus 2x over 3. Okay. And so this is as simplified as I can get that. So that is f over g. Now for the domain. The domain of f is negative infinity to infinity. Because it's just a line. There's no denominator. There's no fractions. There's no square roots. So the domain is automatically negative infinity to infinity. The domain of g is negative infinity to infinity, but I have to remove any x values that will make the denominator zero. So if I set that denominator equal to zero, I get that the x value zero is not in the domain. And where do these two things overlap? Well, this one includes zero and this one doesn't. So they, in, they overlap everywhere except for at zero. So the domain of f intersect the domain of g is going to be negative infinity to zero and then from zero to positive infinity since they overlap everywhere except at zero. So this will have everything shaded. This will have everything to the left of zero shaded. This will have everything to the right of zero shaded. And what are the two shaded regions in common? This section and this section, okay? But now I've got to remove the x value. So this is what it looks like in a number line. Here's zero, and I've got everything to the right shaded, everything to the left shaded, but we're not including zero, okay? And so the domain of f over g is that interval minus where g equals zero. So where does this equal zero? Well, if I multiply both sides by the common denominator again, I get that, 3 equals 0, and this cannot happen, which means there's no other values to remove. No values to remove from the domain of f intersect the domain of g. So what does that mean? It means that the domain of f over g is the exact same as it was before. Since there's nothing else extra to remove in there, this is the final domain. Now, we have one last example, and how is this one different from the other two? In example two, in example B, one of these says that did not have a denominator, and the other did. Here, they both had a denominator, but they were the same value. It's x minus three and x minus three. Here, we both have denominators, but notice that the denominators are not the same in this case. So let's see how that's going to affect everything. So we do have to take f over g. So f over g. It is a complex fraction, so I'm going to multiply by the common denominators. So here that cancels, here this cancels. I end up with x times x plus 1 over 7 times x minus 6. So I end up with x squared plus x over 7x minus 42. And this is as far as I can simplify it, okay? Um, you may even be able to type in this as your final answer, okay? So now for domain. I need to find the domain of f. Now I know that the domain of a fraction is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, except where the denominator equals zero. So except at positive six. So then it looks like this in interval notation. It is from negative infinity to infinity, but with the six removed, okay? Then the domain of G is going to be every real number from negative infinity to infinity, except where this denominator equals zero, which is negative one. So it's from negative infinity to negative one, and then from negative one to infinity. So where do these two things overlap? It's probably easier if you see it um, side by side. Okay. So this is the domain of f, this is the domain of g, and I wanna find the domain of f intersect the domain of g. Okay. 
Okay, so the domain of f is everything to the left of 6 and everything to the right of 6. The domain of g is everything to the left of negative 1 and everything to the right of negative 1. Then the domain intersects what the two have in common. Well, this one includes negative 1, but this one doesn't. So they do not have that in common. This one includes 6, but this one does not. So they do not have that in common. However, both of them have the left side shaded of negative 1. Both of them have negative between negative 1 and 6 shaded. And both of them have to the right of 6 shaded. So that's what the domain of F intersect G looks like on a graph. How do I put that in its interval notation? Is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 6. and then from 6 to infinity, okay? And remember that we also have to remove wherever the denominator g equals 0. So where is g equals 0? That's when 7 over x plus 1 equals 0. Or if I multiply by the common denominator, I get where 7 equals 0, which isn't going to happen. So there's nothing else extra to remove, which means the domain of f over g is from negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 6, and then from 6 to infinity. That is going to be the final domain. So now you have an example of all three different cases um, on how the domain is going to work of f over g.